the light. You get me, right? Sort of. Okay, so let's look at some variational problems here. Um, if you have a ball set on a smooth incline, we'll have a constant acceleration. If the ball is allowed to roll for t seconds, so we have constant acceleration and a number of seconds and a distance of five meters. And then the experiment is repeated, but this time the ball is allowed to roll for 2t, twice the amount of time, 2t seconds, how far <coughs> will the ball roll during the experiment? Okay. So as we're looking for it, looking at this, we can see we have acceleration, we have distance, and we have time. What formula relates those three things together? But which, 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 uh, which formula in acceleration? Okay. The position is equal to one half at squared, right? Okay. So now let's put our multipliers here. Acceleration is constant, right? Yeah. All right. So that's just that stays constant. What ends up changing? The time. Okay. So the time ends up changing times two, and we have to make sure to square it. So then we need to know how far, what the multiplier is here, and then determine how far. So let's look back over here. We ignore the half. We always ignore coefficients. So this is multiplied by one, and this is really being multiplied by four, and so that is equal to times four. We'll have four times the distance there. So if we start out with a distance of five meters originally, if the distance was originally five meters, we then need to multiply that by four, because it's four times the amount of time. I mean, sorry, four times the amount of displacement. Twice the amount of time, it's gonna give us four times the displacement, and that would come up to be 20 meters. And that should be your answer, right? Okay. Any questions on that one? All right, so there was number five. And I think it helps to, to circle, your, circle the, the big concepts that are involved in order to be able to find your equation. You know, you've got to find something with acceleration, distance, and time in it. And here's, here's your formula. And then once you have that formula, write out your multiplier effect down here. And then you can find set both sides equal to each other. And that should begin to help you with these problems. And that's really what I'm looking for in your work. All right, so let's do number nine. Number nine. A ball falls from the top of a very tall building, a uh, distance d and a time t. So we've got distance that the ball goes and a certain amount of time. How long must the time interval be in order for the ball to fall a total distance of 7d? Okay. So here we only have distance and time. It's, the, it's implied, there's one other variable in here, but it's implied. It's not actually Sorry. given to you. Yeah, it's right here. If the ball falls, there also is an acceleration. And we know that acceleration is 10 meters, 10 meters per second squared. Yeah, so. But we don't really have to worry about the actual number in, in, in this kind of a problem. So what again what formula involves distance, time, and acceleration? Alright, so position that it moves, displacement of that object is one half a t squared. Alright, so what's gonna stay constant? Acceleration. Acceleration again. So that's our times one. Okay, and we know, we do not know time, so we do not know this one, but they give us this one. This is going to be times 7. Okay. Now, right here, this is still squared. We've got that squaring effect on it. 
So we're really going to have to rearrange and solve for the question mark here. To do that, we'd have to divide out the multiplier of 1 here, divide out the multiplier of 1 here. That really doesn't change anything on this side, right? We still have a multiplier of 7 is equal to some kind of multiplier effect that is being squared. So now how do we unsquare this thing? Find the square root of this. Find the square root of this, square root of this. So now we know the square root of 7 is going to give us our multiplier effect here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the multiplier effect on this side is going to have to be the square root of 7. Um, and I think that's just where we stop here on this one. This one's not going to go any further. Just We just need to find that 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 um, multiplier effect. How long must it be? Well, um, it would be t times the square root of 7 in this case. That would be our answer. So this is where we would stop. And is that what was given to you on your... Was it written out? If I rearrange this initial formula to t to the square root of the array and then I flip it. And you, cannot, you could do that too. You could rearrange the initial formula. And a lot of you probably already are having it memorized that t is equal to the square root of 2 d over a or 2x over a. 2 x over a, like that. Yeah. We don't worry about any. We could do it like this. We, we have the multiplier effects of 7 here one here, and this probably is even an easier way to do it. So I'm glad you suggested that, Alex. We don't worry about the coefficient there. So t would have to be square root of 7. There. Okay, that, multiplier, that multiplier effect here. The multiplier effect. Um, it is on the, on the answer key. It should say square root of seven, right? Seven t, yeah. The multiplier effect. Sorry, I should say the t is not equal to square root of seven. The multiplier effect is equal to the square root of seven. So then we would we would then take this right here and put it into the multiplier effect. So you could do this is the square root of 7 times t right here, but then t times the square root of 7 either way. So that should be your answer either way. Sorry, I miswrote that. That's a good question, Monica. I just miswrote that up there. Thank you. Because I needed to clarify that. The multiplier effect is equal to the square root of 7. Okay. Two more. Let's do this one. This is number 10. A car accelerates uniformly from rest and travels a distance of 20 meters. So we've got some words right there. Accelerates uniformly. Travels a distance of 20 meters in order to reach a speed v. What total distance must the car travel in order to attain a speed of 5 v? So we've got acceleration. We have speed, we have distance. Notice we are lacking what? Time. So we are lacking time, so we need to go to our no time formulas for this one. What's our what's our no time formula? Okay. And then the kind of the base <coughs> formula would be V squared equals two A times the change. Two A times the change in X plus the initial velocity squared. Well, if it starts from rest, we can get rid of this. Yeah. Bam, that side's good. that's gone. So that, that makes it, so now we're only working with this here. Okay. Now, since it's saying what is the total distance, let's solve for our change in displacement here. So let's get rid of 2a. So, um, 
the change in x is equal to v squared over 2a. See that? I just moved 2a over here to this side. And now we can do our multiplier effect here. All right, so what's staying uniform? Acceleration. Acceleration, so this is multiplied by 1. We don't have to worry about the coefficient. How about v? What's it getting multiplied by? 5. So it says up here in the problem we've got 5v. So our multiplier effect here is that 5 times 5. And then we have to make sure it is squared. Okay. So when we're looking at multiplier effects, what is this multiplier effect right here? Well, it's going to be 5 squared over 1, basically. So we're really looking at 25. This multiplier effect has got to be equal to 25. Okay. Now, if your original distance was 20 meters, then now we're going to have to multiply that by 25, and that'll give us our new distance, and that is 500, right? Okay. Is that making sense? Okay, one more on this one. A ball falls from the top of a very tall building a distance of D and strikes the ground with the speed V. How fast, so again we have speed, will the ball strike the ground if the ball instead falls a total distance of 90? What's it leaving out? Okay. It's leaving out acceleration because the ball is falling, so there's that. So we've got to also think acceleration is in this problem too. So again, what what um, is there a formula that can relate acceleration, speed, and distance? We have to come back. Notice we're missing time still. So we've got to go back to no time. V, v squared equals 2a times your change in displacement plus v naught squared. Well, we know this is going to be 0. How do we know that that is 0? It starts at rest. Yeah, it's falling. And it starts at rest. So there we go. And then we still want to go how fast. So now we've got to solve for V, so take the square root of both sides, and V would equal the square root of 2AX, basically. All right, so now let's do our multiplier effects with these things. We do not know the multiplying effect here. We don't care about the coefficient. What's the multiplying effect on A? Times 1, that's staying constant, and it said that the distance is changing by a factor of 9, 9 D. So your multiplying effect on V okay, is actually going to be square root of 9. And what is the square root of 9? 3. So we're looking at a multiplying effect of 3. 3 times the original velocity. So we're going to look at 3 times the original velocity there. So what is 3 times the um, original velocity? Well, we don't know. I think this is just where we stopped the problem because they didn't give us any more information than that. So we have to stop. Right there, there's our answer. Now, if they would have told us what our original speed was, um, then we would be able to figure it out if it fell nine times further. 3v. That's a v. That's a really bad v is what that is. I'm glad you asked. Sometimes my handwriting is not the best. Okay.